So this is Red Dead Redemption 2 running on the HP Victors that has a Ryzen 7 5800H CPU and an RTX 3060. The purpose of this video is to show you how cool this laptop runs once the repaste has been done. So you can see the CPU temperatures are not going anywhere higher than 77C and the GPU also stays under 68C. Previously, these temperatures were quite high. The CPU was hitting the high 90s. I was getting 95C on the 5800H and the GPU was hitting over 80C. And now you can clearly see the temperatures are in control. So if you are someone who is having overheating problems in your laptop computer, then you have clicked the right video. In this video, I'm going to talk about this problem and how you can get over this problem in a few steps. This can be a little invasive for a few users because I'm going to suggest you to just get your laptop open. You will need to get your back cover off and you will need to get that heatsink that is cooling your CPU and GPU die. You will need to replace the stock thermal interface material that came pre-applied from factory. If you can do it and if you can replace that stock thermal interface material with some high quality thermal paste, then most probably your overheating problem is going to get solved. Now there are a few other considerations too that can be the reason why your laptop computer overheats. Now if you're going to place your laptop computer on your desk and use it just like that, then it is bound to overheat no matter how high quality thermal interface you have got in your laptop computer. Laptops generally used to take all the air from the bottom of their chassis and most of the times that chassis is sitting very close to the desk. Unfortunately, in that way, the laptop computer from the bottom never gets any sort of room to get any cool air into the chassis. That is the reason why your laptop computer overheats. This is not the most prominent reason, but this is the second reason I would say because of which your laptop computer overheats. But in this video, I'm not going to be focusing on all the issues that are responsible for laptop overheating. In this video, I will be showing you how I disassembled my HP Victus recently and got away with the overheating problem with that computer. So as I mentioned, I will be disassembling the HP Victus. This is a brand new computer. I haven't uh, used it much, not more than 15, 20 days, but I decided to disassemble this computer just because I have got some really high quality thermal paste left with me and I just wanted to use it. So here we have the machine itself. I'm going to flip it back now and I am going to just get this back cover off. And to get this back cover off, you will need to remove one, two, three, four, and four screws on the top two. So a total of eight screws are to be taken off. This is a brand new machine. So before getting this lid off, I have done all the testing. All the data has already been collected. So we will get a good idea of what sort of a result we get after repasting this machine. So let's do it. First up, I will be getting the iFixit kit off. So guys, I was able to remove this back cover, but this is not an easy thing to do. In the videos that I saw, it was quite simple. The way they demonstrated it looked like it is just a piece of cake, but I'm telling you guys, this is not an easy thing to do. So make sure you have proper tools. I was not having any plastic spudgers. So what I did was I just used this, uh, uh, used this driver and I used some electrical tape on it so that this tip doesn't hurt the plastic part of my computer. So I just used multiple electrical tapes and then just put it on the on this driver and then just push the right through the all four corners and i was able to get this lid off it was not easy and it is not going to be easy for you too so just make sure you're doing it properly else you can damage the machine in this process a really important thing to consider 
Now straight away I can see a few negative things. So we have some thermal paste getting out of this part of the heat sink. Yeah, it is thermal paste. So I am going to just uh, uh, get it off. Yeah, it is thermal paste. So to get this heat sink off, I'll need to get this screw and this screw from this side and then these eight screws. I guess seven screws in the middle and that is going to be sufficient to get the heat sink off. I won't be touching anything apart from the heat sink because I'm here to just replace the thermal compound on the memory chips and the CPU die and the GPU die. So we'll proceed with just disassembling the cooler only. So I removed all the eight screws that I mentioned but I forgot to mention the screw that was hiding here. There was one more screw so apart from the first screw and the second screw here on the top there was one more screw that was holding the heat sink. Another important thing that you should consider at this point is you need to open the screws in a particular order. There are numbers mentioned all across the heat sink. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Open the screws only in the order they are mentioned. So I've opened all the screws. I'm going to get the heat sink off now. So it looks just about fine. And there is a lot of mess to clean. We have some decent amount of thermal paste on the CPU and the GPU die which is a good sign and the best part is this doesn't look dry. This could dry over the course of time but the purpose of this video is to apply some really high quality thermal interface material that can transfer a lot of heat from these dyes to the these heat sinks. This is a really capable heat sink. I can I can understand this has some weight to it. This must be around half a kilo, 500 grams around. So this is a very good thing or maybe around 600 or 700 grams. I cannot exactly tell. Unfortunately, I don't have a scale on which I can measure this. But yeah, this is a very good heat sink. You need a really good heat sink for a laptop computer like this. You've got a lot of power here and you need some substantial amount of metal to cool these chips. And I noticed one bad thing here and that is we have some thermal paste here too but there are no chips here so this is not good. Yeah so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace everything I'm going to clean everything and then I'm going to get back when it's time to reassemble the entire thing back. Uh, before I leave I want to mention a few more things so we need to make sure that we clean using the isopropyl alcohol otherwise this is going to be really difficult to clean all the way through. So I have this isopropyl alcohol. I used to keep isopropyl alcohol in the spray bottle. This makes it really convenient to use it. Then we have some paper towels too. This makes it really easy to clean all the thermal interface material. I have been using it for quite a while. This is a really good technique to clean the thermal interface material. Then uh, all I'll need to do after that is to apply some fresh thermal compound. I'm going to apply this over these two dyes and then on the remaining part of the PCB I'm going to make sure to apply the NTH one. This is also pretty good but this stuff is really expensive so I won't be using it on the entire machine. So everything is clean now. It took me quite a while to clean everything about uh, you can say 45 minutes to clean the entire thing and the heatsink too. Everything is now clean. There is still some thermal interface material here in the heat pipe and the metal housing of the heat sink. But I cannot get it off and it is not going to matter anyway because that surface is not going to get in contact. And I wanted to mention one more thing and that is uh, HP didn't use some good thermal interface material to cool the memory chips. It was really difficult to get it off from this machine. You can see it is still present between the two memory chips and I was unable to get it off no matter what I do. 
there are some really small components too that I needed to make sure that I don't damage in the process of getting the thermal interface material off. So I didn't apply too much pressure. I was very gentle and made sure that I don't damage anything. So the cleaning is done. Before finally putting the thermal interface material on, I just want to give it a very final wipe. And as I mentioned, I used some isopropyl alcohol throughout the cleaning. So this is liquid and obviously it evaporates, but I still want to ensure that everything is nice and dry before I put everything back together. So I'm going to use this very simple conventional hair dryer. So everything is flying around here. I'm not going to leave the machine right now because everything is going to get settled on this part of the system. I'm going to take this a little bit away for a while. So before cleaning everything, I took a photo of the board itself to get an idea where all the thermal paste has to be applied. So you can clearly see. So all the areas where I need to put thermal interface material on are marked on this picture. So this is going to be just a reference and I'm going to make sure that I apply thermal interface material in all the areas that I can see in this picture. So if you're going to follow this video then make sure you're taking a picture before cleaning the thermal interface material on all the chips. This is going to make your life a lot easier. So now what I'm going to do is just get the NTH1 and we'll be using it to cool all the memory chips. So I applied the Noctua NTH1 on all the memory chips and the VRAMs and I've applied the Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut on the CPU and GPU die. So this should be sufficient and I guess this should work really well because these two pastes have got some really high thermal conductivity numbers. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut has been very well known for its very high uh, heat transfer rate and the Noctua NTH1 has been out for quite a while. This is also a really good paste. This is just slightly worse than the Cryonaut in my experience but it is more than sufficient to cool the memory chips and the VRAMs. So I'm going to put everything back now. Now there is a really important thing that you should do in the process of repasting or whenever you are reinstalling the cooler after inst installing the fresh thermal paste and that is to just align everything up and just apply a little bit force before putting the screws on. So finally the heatsink is on. Now I'm going to make sure to tighten the screws in the opposite order. Starting with the 7. So I can clearly feel the tension. At this point I am going to stop and will tighten the screw on the other side. So I am not going to tighten any screw all the way through. So at this point, the reassembly of the heatsink is complete. Now I'm going to just put the back cover on and I'm going to start the computer to have a look at what the temperatures are. Let's get closer to him. Come on, up this way. Definitely Murphy's. I say we deal with them from here. 